all of you to today's webinar. My name is Jason Morrison. I'm with HH2 Web Services. Today's webinar is going to be going over the latest version of remote payroll. To give you guys an outline for any of us that are joining that are from the field that want to see some of the new improvements that we've made to the time card, I'm going to go over those first so that we can get you on your way. Um, we won't uh, spend too much time. I'll just quickly go over the time card as a field supervisor or an employee entering in time um, as a crew member. And then after that, I'll just quickly brief over the time approval screen and then uh, we'll get into um, some more of the payroll administrator functionality in the system, some settings, and then I'm going to cover the new export uh, menu in, in full detail for any of the payroll administrators that are on the call. There's quite a few of you. Um, we will uh, you feel free to go ahead and submit your questions uh, to us, and um, we'll, we probably won't have time to get to all of those today. You can submit those through um, in your in your uh, chat bar there, and um, and then we can respond to you after the webinar too. We can get the answers out to you um, after we're done with this meeting. So the first thing that I want to do, like I said, is I want to go into the time card view. I'm logged in on a, on a demo site that we have here. And uh, what you're looking at is the latest version of remote payroll. I'm going to go into the timesheet from the home page. So I'm right on the house button up at the top, and I'm going to go to uh, HH2 remote payroll timesheet. It's the first link on the main menu. And as a field employee or as a field manager, you'll notice um, that there's been some cosmetic changes made to the time card. We've tried to streamline this a bit. You're even seeing some photos now, which are new. We get a lot of questions on this. Why are we incorporating photos uh, into the employee names? Let me switch this to from a weekly view, which I'm on right now, to a daily view. I'm going to click on the weekly icon here and go to daily, and you'll see that those, some of those photos persist up at the top. We've got a round circle here. And if you click on this, if you click on the initials of your employee, you can actually go in and click on the employee photo and upload a photo for your field personnel. And the reason why we're doing that to answer that question is that we found in studies that it's much easier to code time uh, to a photo than it is to read the names of your employees along the top of your time card. We just associate with our employees better um, by looking at them, and especially for our companies out there that have employees with the same last name or similar last names, then the photo also helps identify who that employee is when you're coding time for them. So that's a new feature, brand new feature in the system that you can start using on the timesheets, and we would encourage you to go in and update those. Um, some other things that I, I, I want to go over up front is in these sidebars. They have a, a more button up uh, on the top of the time card. And what these are are, are uh, additional settings that slide uh, back and forth. Okay, So you can see that we're expanding these, almost these uh, side out bars where we're collapsing in here. Um, the, the settings uh, or additional settings for the users as they log in. Um, so that's a major change. And the reason why we've uh, gone with this type of a look is that we're only um, putting out there the items that you, that you regularly want to see. We don't want to clutter up the time card with all of the different icons that we originally had out there before. So um, you can come in and, uh, you know, um, you know, go, go into these to see that all of the buttons that you were used to seeing um, that were static up at the top of your previous time cards are now um, in these collapsible drawers or sidebars, whatever you want to call them. Um, some of the icons have been updated. You can see the approve button up at the top has a thumbs up button here. The major changes that we've made to the time card on, on this view is mainly just with the way that it looks. And uh, some of the menus when when it when it goes to um, when you go to add uh, jobs and cost codes um, or employees to your time card. So let me just go ahead and just show you the new add and, uh, add jobs and codes to timesheet box right here. Um, if you click on this now, we've still got our job, our cost code, um, and even our default coding options on here. 
For those of you that are using default coding, you know what that is. That's where you're not coding to a job or a cost code. You're just coding to a pay ID. So that options here. If you if you have this turned on now to add default coding to the timesheet, you just click on this box. You'll see that it says default coding is turned on, and then you can hit add to timesheet, and it will always put default coding up at the top of your time card now rather than the bottom. So that's one change that we made. In regards to the job list, when you go to search for a job, you can click anywhere in the job box or on the lookup icon, which is the magnifying glass. And when you click on that, we've gone now to these, they look like V cards. All right, um, all of your jobs are listed out in these uh, card views. It's more modular. And you can um, actively start searching on your jobs and even cost codes this way up at the top by putting in the job name or number. So if I wanted to search on, uh, say, this job here, I could just type in 003 and hit enter, and anything with 003 is going to pull up. And I can also search by name. So if I just type in Fort and hit enter, I can pull up a job that way too. Um, to select a job, you just click on it. Now, you don't have to search that way. You can come in here and um, select. Uh, whichever whichever job you want just by by clicking on it and using the scroll function but I've always uh, trained most of you on using the search bars up at the top because you can drill down to things much quicker so just select the jobs that you want and then the next thing that you would want to do let's cancel out of this I'll start over so we'll come in here we'll select a job the next thing that you want to do is go in and select your cost codes now the problem with this is happens to be a job that doesn't have any cost codes on it. Um, the problem that many of you guys have run into in the past is that when your people are going to select a job, they they forget to select a cost code, and um, that would result in um, having like a default code on a job, and it would error out in Timberline. So I'm sure most of you. Re, you know, have had that come up, and it's been a training nightmare for some of you. Here's a job, by the way, that has a code on it. Um, as you can see, I didn't know which jobs had codes on them. Um, but, but that's always been a nightmare for some of you when you're training new employees is adding a job. You would tell someone, go and add the job, but then they would forget to add the cost code, and it would add default coding uh, to the bottom of that. And then when you would go to do your export and import into Timberline, it would get rejected. Now we have some features for you administrators out there. I'll show you later on in the meeting how you can make a cost code required now if they're job costing. So if they select a job, we can turn on an option that requires them to put in a cost code here. If they do not put that in, it will actually throw a little warning or error at the bottom and force them to put it in before they can add it to their timesheet. So I'm sure a lot of you will appreciate that. Um, so there isn't a way to, to change the format. Question came in, can you can you change this format up here on, on how this looks here? There is not a way. This is our format that we're going to. So if you don't like that they're that they're listed out in this design here, just just use the search bar. Type in part of the job name or number, and this is moot. All right. Um, so when you're adding a job and a cost code, uh, you would come in here, you would add the job. I added this. Um, 015 job that we have in our demo site and I went and I added uh, some codes okay you can see that when I'm clicking on the codes I'm just clicking on them and they're getting highlighted orange and then I can hit add selected items it's giving me now a preview of all of the items that I'm about to add to my timesheet and if I'm good with that I can click on the add to timesheet and it will add these items to the time card before I clear out, before I do that though, in your current version of payroll, you're used to having this plus more button up at the top. We've changed that to call it new batch. So what this does is it allows you to add more than uh, one job and then the cost goes, click new batch. And what it's done, you can see it's automatically added that behind the scenes to the time card. And then I can go back in and I can repeat adding more jobs and codes without having to close this window out. So I'm still in here adding more codes. And if I'm done, then I'll just hit add and then add to timesheet. So it's a much quicker way of adding your codes to your time card now. 
Um, for those of you that may um, that have mentioned that you don't like the gray, this is actually a lot darker on your screen. Go to meeting doesn't doesn't portray the the gray color um, very well, especially if you're on a large monitor or screen. This gray is not going to stand out the greatest. So I would encourage you once you're once we've rolled this out to just once you have it on your monitor, everything's going to be a lot darker. This is actually a lot darker than the way that you're seeing it right now. So just be aware of that. That has a lot to do with just um, transmitting this through our GoToWebinar session for you. Um, the time card now, you, you won't see this auto scroll or this auto uh, search box up at the top. It says type a keyword and press enter to search the timesheet. Um, we've had some questions from some of the other clients that have already been rolled out on the system. Uh, that they that they were not seeing this box here, the search box up at the top of their timesheet. And I know a lot of you uh, heavily search on your time cards. And so if you don't see this box, it's because you don't have more than 10 cost codes on your time card yet. This will automatically appear at the top of your time card when you have more than 10. So just be aware of that. Um, and this is, again, allowing you to actively search your timesheet by, by key name. Uh, or like a like a name, or um, it's a key lookup for a number or a name um, or a letter. So you can use that to to, to drill down to your cost codes and and your jobs very easily. The comment boxes down below are still the same down at the bottom. Um, you when you click on them, uh, they'll pop up. That we've made them um, much larger and easier to see in here. But you're still going to fill out the comments the same way. You've got the employee, the date here, so you can you can um, uh, you know just this is going to pull up automatically on the day that you you clicked on on the on the comment box, and you can type in your comments here. And now, when we save them out, we've even made the colors even darker down at the bottom. Um, you're still coding your time the exact same way. You're going to put the, your cursor in the in the box and code time. And we've abbreviated the uh, the pay ID. So the pay ID abbreviation is showing in the box now, and so it's a lot easier to tell what your what type of pay you're coding to. And if you're hovering over the box, it'll continue to tell you the full pay ID description as well. Um, okay, so some of you have asked about unit specific comments um, right here. You can see you can see when I hover when I click in the box right here. See how it says view unit uh, details. That's how you go in and add those in. Um, it's not at the top of the time card anymore. It's right on the box, and we felt like that's been a lot easier to do. Of course, you've got to have time in here in the in the box before you can uh, code to a unit specific comment. So. Um, you know, just click in the box, and then you'll see the the view unit details right here. Um, yes, default coding is something that you guys are definitely going to want to set up. So, um, with the default code, if it's it's turned on by group, if it, it'll automatically carry over if you currently have it turned on for your for your uh, for your groups. And again, the way that you add a default code is you just come in here. You don't select a job or a cost code. You just click on the box that says default coding on, hit add, and then it'll always appear up at the top of your time card, and uh, you'll have access to it. If, of course, if you remove it, like I've done here, um, then you could come back in and add it again. So if you don't want to see it, you can add and remove that at any time. Um, so yes, um, for any of you that are using more than one unit-specific comment, Again, everything is feature parity, so you guys will have the exact same things. If you got more than one comment or custom field that you're using, they're going to be a, they're going to appear there as well, and you'll be able to code to those on your timesheet. So those are just the little things that we would talk about, um, you know, after you've been moved to the to the latest version, um, or if you have additional questions on that, um, or where it's found if you can't find it on your time card, or have just some confusion about it. Just let our support team know, or let us know in a comment, and we'll get we'll retry it out to you and, and answer those comments as soon as we can. So that's the the, the main um, new aspects of the timesheet in here. Um, don't forget to approve your time. If you're an employee, you approve it here up at the top. If you're a crew manager, you're probably used to going to remote payroll and the time approval screen. 
The time approval screen, I just want to briefly go over this. There's two color changes that we made in the system. You're used to seeing um, blue, uh, a blue icon for ready time. So the time that is ready for you to approve, we've changed that now from blue to this yellow. You can see that it says um, that we haven't approved this. So if I want to approve this time, I can approve it individually like this or just click the thumbs up button and approve it all at once. So that's one major color change that we made is we are, the ready time went from blue to yellow and finalized time or the time that you've approved is now uh, green. Okay, so um, just be aware of those color changes. Some other uh, items that are changes that we made on the time approval screen is on the eyeball view in here now. Um, when you come in here, let's go to someone that has some time. Uh, the details have changed. We used to have two tabs. We used to have the detailed breakdown and then a tab that had the summary, just a little summary based on pay ID total. We've combined that into one now, so you're seeing that all on one page here. Um, and then your approval history is with a thumbs up. It's called approval log. So when you click on your approval log, you'll see the, the same as before, the level of, of, of who approved it with a date stamp right here, date and time. Um, so we've condensed this a little bit, made it easier to use. Uh, also a new um, icon on here is the signature icon. So for those of you that want to capture signatures now, uh, you can do that on the web, the web version. Uh, all you need to do to capture a signature is just click on the uh, pen. It looks like a little pen or fountain pen icon. And we have, I don't know if you notice that, we still have the hover menus. So when you hover over these buttons, uh, you'll see what they do. This one says click to view supply employee signature. So if you're not sure, just put your cursor over the button and it will tell you. So we have the employee's name, we have the dates, we have their total number of hours, and then we have the, the uh, agreement that they're signing off to. This is very familiar for those of you that are using our iPad app out there for time entry. This is uh, very similar to, to the signature um, option on the iPad app. And you've got your I agree to, to these statements, to the above statement, and to uh, my pay totals, that the pay totals are correct. And if they don't agree, to any of this stuff on here. They can uncheck it and then they can provide a comment and you can capture that comment. Of course, on the web with a desktop or a laptop, you're going to use your mouse to sign your name. And that can be awkward for some people trying to sign their name with the mouse. So if you're doing this on a, um, an, a like an iPad and even using the web version and not using the app, it's much easier because you can just use your finger to sign your signature, and it's a lot, uh, it's a lot more pleasing um, and 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 easy to use. It, the signature looks a lot better too. But you can see that when we captured the signature, it yellowed it out, just like a comment, um, you know, just like we have here with a comment where a comment's been left on this employee's timesheet. Um, uh, going um, going over here, you've got all of this, all the same icons that you ha um, that are up here are on the employee time card too. So that's something that I didn't really show. But the the plus more buttons um, still have the Excel and the PDF in here. Okay, you still have the clear, the auto fill, the move, the copy, deny, reclaim. Some of these, as an employee or even a manager, you may not use depending on where you're at in the approval process. Um, but you still have access to the Excel and the, and the, and the Excel time card and then the PDF. Right now, um, when you guys were printing out your timesheets, you only have the Excel option. The PDF um, is here now because you can dump out all of the data into an Excel spreadsheet and the time cards have been replaced from the uh, Excel format to PDF. Um, so when you're, when you're printing these out, I don't have time to, to get into these. You can play around with the Excel and the PDF. I would just point out when you download these though, up at the top, just make sure at the top of your web browser that um, your pop-up blocker doesn't catch it. If it does, just click on the pop-up blocker and just say to always allow HH2, stuff from HH2 to, to pop up because these will just automatically pop up. Um, just like you can see here, I'll just go ahead and click on this one and you're gonna see that the time cards pull up. and um, um, don't be confused if you don't see the Adobe bar. This is an Adobe 
uh, page that we're pulling up and you can see that there's no way to print this out until you scroll down. Take your mouse and just move it down on the side and you'll see the Adobe menu bar pull up where you can save these. You can zoom in and make them larger, smaller, and then of course the print icon is there. All right, so we've gone back to our old PDF timesheets um, because a lot of a lot of you liked that and um, that have been clients of ours for a long time, but we also continue to give you the Excel uh, information and put those into their own um, columns and rows so that you can really report or filter or do anything you want on these time entries right from the time card view or from the time approval screen. So um, that's that's the the time approval. Um, I mainly just oh one other one other change on time approval. Um, more in the well, I think a lot of you as as maybe crew managers, superintendents, or project managers, um, if you're a company that uses a lot of pay IDs, we have a, a handful of companies that have over a hundred pay IDs that they use even in the same pay period. And we used to limit the number of pay IDs that could be seen in the time approval page. I believe it was eight. I think we limited that to eight uh, pay IDs on this screen, and then you wouldn't see the rest. You'd have to actually drill down to the time card to see the rest of the pay ID totals for an employee, just because we were limited on the space that we had on this screen. Well, now, um, the way that we've architectured this time approval screen, you have all of the pay IDs. So no matter what they code to in regards to pay, if you had 10, 15, 20 different pay, pay types or pay IDs that you had in a, in a given pay period, you would see all of them and we break out all the totals. We'll just continue to wrap the pay IDs down on an employee so that you see all of them and then the totals along the bottom. Um, yes, the Excel spreadsheet, another comment came in, the Excel spreadsheet does not look like the, the, the PDF time card at all. It's a labor detail breakdown. So you're getting all of the time broken down by day. It's similar to the payroll manager Excel spreadsheet that you get and you can get that at the employee level for your own time if you're an employee coding in your own time or if you're a manager you would be able to get that for your crew. So the, the, the PDF time card is the actual time card that you would print. Um, the, other, the other item um, that I would cover is the filters up at the top. You still have some of the same filters up at the top as before. Um, and like the filters, if you wanted to filter on different time statuses like uh, no time. For a crew manager, for you guys as supers or PMs, you're probably not going to use this a whole lot. Um, the main reason for using this would be your start and end dates up at the top here. Uh, when you're reviewing past time entries or you want to go to a specific week. So that's all I really wanted to cover on the, the actual time card and time approval. So for any of you guys that are joining this meeting that need to get back to work, or just wanted to see what the new time card or new time approval screen is going to look like, that's it. Not, um, it should still be, look very similar to what you're doing right now and you shouldn't have any issues going in once the conversion is made and uh, entering in your time the same way that you always do. All right. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift gears. I'm going to log out. I'm going to log more uh, in as like a payroll manager or administrator in the system and I'm going to cover some of the administrative things. Um, for all of you that are administrators in HH2 Remote Payroll. Okay, the first place that I want to go to is I want to cover the two main areas that you're going to be using on a regular basis in here, and that's setting up user accounts in the system, and then that is also your crew dashboards or your crew setup area. Some of you call them crews, some of you call them payroll groups. So I'm going to go into those two areas um, because both of them have changed quite a bit and you're going to frequently still be going in there and we've made some awesome uh, advancements in speeding up some of these processes that you always do with new hires or new uh, managers out in the field. So um, the, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into remote payroll and when I click into remote payroll the first link that I want to show you is payroll users. Okay. We, st we still have your user accounts being set up under the yellow icon. Uh, payroll users, this is where all of your users are located. Uh, similar theme as to your add jobs and cost codes drop down uh, menu. 
Okay. Again, we're going to that card uh, view or modal view in here. Um, if you want to search on an employee, you can just type in part of their name or their employee ID. It will automatically search on those employees and pull back the results. When you click on an employee, it will show you all of the information that you have filled out, uh, like the username. And for security reasons, it's never going to display the password here. But notice that there's some asterisks in here next to the user account information now. These are required fields. Before, when you guys were going in and creating users, you'd go in and hit the user button, and then there was a little button off to the side that would say create user account. You'd click it, and it automatically do first initial, last name, and then it would put in a default password of all lowercase hh2, and then you have the option of updating the password and putting in an email address. We've gone away from that, and the reason why we've gone away from that is with this day and age, everybody should have an email now. If, you, if your guys don't have an email, they need to get one, whether it's a free one on Gmail, Hotmail, whatever, get them an email or create one in your company for them. And the reason behind that is for security reasons, um, just people getting a hold of other um, employee, uh, employee usernames. For those of you um, that don't have your passwords updated or don't have email addresses in there right now, we're going to still honor that will still honor those user accounts in your system. We're not going to lock them out or anything like that. This is for new users that you're setting up. So when we come back to this main uh, user page, again, add a new user. When you click the plus button up at the top, it's going to require these fields right here to be filled out. And we are doing that now just to prevent people from going in and logging in as someone just based on default credentials that people have always gotten accustomed to. Okay, so you'll have to provide an email now. When you fill this information out, the user gets created, and if we click on a user here, all of these fields uh, open up. Now, the, the thing that you want to be aware of in here is this one right here, user mappings. The user mapping is what takes the user account and maps that to their employee ID in Timberline. So when you click on the user mapping, you can see that this person happens to be a, a technician in the system you know, for our, our field service. But if I wanted to map them up for remote payroll or, or anything else like that, you want to make sure that you map them to the employee. So you can click on that field and then you can search for the employee in the system and just make sure that the user account is mapped to their to their Timberline employee ID right here. That's the only thing that you really need to do for a user. Okay, Once you set the user up and map them, then, then you're done. Then it's a matter of uh, assigning them to the crew um, and, and, and giving them other permissions. If they're a payroll administrator, we would give them other permissions and stuff like that. So user accounts, remote payroll, and then coming into uh, payroll users, clicking the plus button here. All right. Um, password convention has changed too. You got to have at least one um, uppercase uh, letter and a number. All right. So I don't know if you guys noticed that too. Passwords must be at least six characters long, contain at least one uppercase letter, and at least one number. If they don't meet, if your current um, user accounts, as I mentioned previously, if they do not match this, they can still log in right now. This is only for new user accounts that you're setting up in the future. Okay, If you're creating a new hire today um, in Timberline, you sync them over into HH2, you're creating a user account, this is what's going to be required in the system to move forward with a new user account in HH2. All right. Um, so you don't, for existing, you don't need to go back in. It's, it's. I would go back in and put in an email and, and update some of that stuff, but it's not going to make, you know, it's not going to prevent them right now from from logging into the system. We'll honor that. Let me go into payroll groups now. The this other one, the payroll groups is where all of the permissions are getting updated within the group. In the previous system, um, when you would go into a group, you would see the tabs running along the top here. Well, now we have everything running along the side, and we've made it much, much easier in the setting up of the group to, um, 
to change certain things. The first change that I want to show you that all of you are going to want to write down and go and change, you have to do this change at the group level, is if you want to require a cost code for jobs so that your guys don't mistakenly code to default code on a job, then you do it at each of your crews. You'll have to go into each of your crews one by one and make this change. Where you do it is you click on the crew and you go into the settings field. It's the first link. And on the settings field, um, if, as you scroll about halfway down, it shows all of the different criteria that you have turned on for your group. By default, when we're doing implementations, we usually just turn on jobs and cost codes. As I've implemented many of you, and I'm looking at all of you that are in this meeting, and there's quite a few of you, I'm seeing the people that I know that code to certified classes, that code to general ledgers, or code to unions. That's not something that you're going to have to go and turn on. When we do the conversion for you, all of your settings that you previously had turned on are going to get converted over into the latest version of Remote Payroll. So you shouldn't have to change any of this. The only thing that I want you to change is this option right here on your job cost codes. Um, the option for most of you will be on enabled, and I want you to change it from enabled to required with job. That will make it so that when your guys are going in and coding time to a job, if they don't put in a cost code, it will not allow them to add it to their time card. This will always be required with a job. Okay. Um, so that is a, a, a big change that some of you have been asking for, and that's under the settings. Um, all of this other stuff is what we would consider to be a one-off. I will just point out a couple other things that you may or may not get into, and that is the employees right here. If some of you are going in and um, assigning out the employees for your crew managers, or if you've got an office group and you need to add an employee to a crew, you can do it right here. This is showing you now all of the employees, the assigned employees that are a part of this crew um, in the system, and it's really easy to remove someone. If I want to remove someone, I just hit the X button and take them right off the time, uh, off, the, off the crew. If I want to add someone very easily, I can come down here and hit the plus button to add them, and they're automatically up at the top. So we've made this pick list be a lot easier just by going boom, 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 you know, and then if I want to add people, I can just click, click, click and go through down the list and just quickly add them to my, to my group. Much easier. You can also search for them up at the top. Your pay IDs are in here now. Um, it's easy to, um, to come in and reorder your pay IDs. You can just delete something um, or add it back with the plus button here. And then, of course, you can assign your managers over the crews by coming in here and seeing who's currently the manager on the crew by clicking on crew manager um, um, and, and doing the exact same thing. Let me just refresh my time card here. And I'll go into this, and we can go to crew manager. We can see Donald's on here. If I wanted to add a second person, I could come in and just click the plus button, or I could remove someone you know, from the crew. Um, so that's, that are, those are some of the new features on the crew level. For those of you that have project managers or superintendents that are using job specific uh, approvals where you're assigning out the jobs to your guys so that when a, a, a foreman or someone or a manager out there is filling out the time and it's getting routed automatically to like a project manager where you go and assign the jobs now for those people um, is under their user account. There is no, um, you, you, I guess you can come in here and go to the, to the jobs link, but it's, it's, it's much, much easier to do this from the user account because if you do it from the jobs link that you're used to using, you're assigning a manager to a job. You're doing it by job. So it's, it's tedious because if you have lots of jobs and you want to do this, like you have a manager, a PM, that's over 10 jobs, on this method right here, I'd have to go through each job one by one and assign that manager. Whereas if I go to remote payroll and I go to the payroll users account and I just pull up the PM, let's say this is my PM right here, Gary Cooper, the way that I can assign jobs to him is just to come down to the role that he is. Um, remember, we have a job site level one and a job site level two. 
just make sure that you are using the right one. Either it's a superintendent level or the or the project manager level, and you would just click on this and then just go through and assign the jobs this way. You can search on the jobs, or you can scroll through and say, okay, he's on that job, that job, and that job. And it's much easier to do it that way than doing it job by job. Okay, so I like to do it at the user level, and it will save you a lot of time. So those are the the the, the core basics of the administration. Um, everything else um, is is usually what we would consider to be a one-off, where you're not having to switch things up too often. If you find yourself in a bind or you're not sure on how to do something, feel free to let our support team know. They can either go through that with you, Tina, and her team can go through that with you, or they'll just schedule you on my calendar to go through some additional training to turn certain things on or off. Um, very easy to do, so don't hesitate to let us know. The, the next thing that I want to cover is I want to get into the labor export menu because the labor export menu is a completely different way of uh, exporting out the time. And we're actually going back to the first way that we did it. Um, uh, you know, I've been with the company now nine, almost nine, or yeah, nine years. And when we first uh, rolled out uh, remote payroll, we made the labor export menu something that um, when, when you were exporting out time, you couldn't export it out again. You, you actually took the time, exported out the approved time out of HH2, and once it was exported, you are no longer able to see that time in the system. It was cleared out. Um, the only way that you could see the time in the system was to do some reporting on it. So we've gone back to that method where on your approved time, on the time approval screen, the only time that you're going to see in your labor export menu is the time that you have personally approved in the system as a payroll administrator. If you haven't approved the time as a payroll administrator by default, then you're not going to um, see the time in your labor export menu. So you'll notice that we have this labor export menu here, and when you click on it, you're going to have to, depending on, um, by default, it's always going to default to the current date range. Because this is demo data, um, I know I have some demo data in here for a specific date range. And and so what I would want to do is, is go in and um, filter on that. Let me see if I can come in. I may have to log out and log back in as a different um, administrator. Oh, here's here's some time right here. So I, you know, I just did a quick date range search. You would always want to make sure that your starting and your start date and your end date is the same as what you're um, uh, exporting and importing into Timberline. Okay, so this is always going to be set by default for you, but you always want to check it and make sure that your start date and your end date is correct. All right. Um, down here is going to show all of the employee time in the system and the totals. So when you go to export this out now, you have these included buttons on the side. So the beauty of this window right here is if you don't want to export someone out because you have hourly and, and maybe you want to do a, a separate export for your hourly people, but then you want to do another export for your salary people, um, by the way, I would set those up as pay groups in Timberline and filter on those because you can filter right in here on pay groups and that's an easy way to filter pay groups, pay payroll groups or pay groups, um, even by certified class. That's a whole other um, training session though. Um, but if you want to exclude someone from not showing up in the export file, you can just click them like that and then you can um, hit the export transactions and notice it exported everything out except for the people that I excluded. Okay, Now that time that I just exported out, it's gone. I would still see it on my time approval screen, but I can't make any edits or changes to that, to that time in the system unless I roll that time back into my labor export menu. And the reason why we do that is we've got a lot of feedback from you guys um, if we go into the history here, there's a history will now, by the way, and you can see that export that I did. So it date stamped it and it told us where it was right here. The reason why we do this is because in the old menu on the, labor, on the time approval screen, 
a lot of you that have these different pay periods or different times or reasoning for exporting out people out of the system, I'll give you a good example of one. Let's say you have a layoff. You lay someone off in the middle of the pay period and then you export their time out of the system. You import them into Timberline. You cut them that check and pay them and they're on their way. And then you go in at the end of the week to export everybody else out. So you approve everybody else and you forgot to go in and unapprove that person's time. Well, now when you run your export file, that guy that you already exported out is now in your import file again. And now you've duplicated up his time entries inside of Timberline on accident. And we've had uh, very large companies with us that do not want that. They don't want to ever have the mistake of accidentally exporting out uh, a more, you know, an employee's time more than once out of the system and then running into the risk of having to manually go into Timberline and clear those entries out one by one. And on a much larger scale, that is more tedious um, for, for larger companies. So now what we've done is we've made it so that when you export out the time, it's out of the system. In order to get it back into the system to make changes, you have to hit an undo button on your export logs. So just remember that, that the export logs are available under the history icon here. And if you want to roll something back into the system, I just click undo and hit OK. And now if I close this and we come back into our date range, I think I did August 1st through um, the present you'll see, or actually maybe it was the 30th, you'll see that all of my time entries are back in there now. Okay, so that's how I would roll them back into the system and I can go back to the approval screen and I can undo, I can reclaim their time and I can, I can fix it and, and do whatever I want with it. You also have uh, always, we always now have, give you a file a copy of your export file right here. So if you lose it, like let's say you lose a hard drive or you forgot where you saved your export file, don't panic. You can always get a copy of it because we store it in your logs here. And these will always be available. You'll always be able to come through and scroll by week and, and scroll through your logs and, and get those. So when you export out, here's the link to your export file. Okay, I, some of you like to do the right click target as and save it. Others like to click on this and, and, and then download it and then open it up and then do a save as and save it somewhere to your hard drive. You'll have to forgive me. I, I, I've, um, I've, uh, un, I just uninstalled my, my, my text pad. Um, so mine was automatically loading up into my text pad and just opening it up. I actually uninstalled that the other day to uh, install an update. So. It's not available, but you'll still save it the exact same way. You're going to still import this the exact same way into Timberline. So none of that's changed, just exporting out the time. If you go into the, your labor, uh, your time, your time approval screen, and you go, you want to run your your kind of your labor export um, dump right here in Excel. You're not going to have the option to run that text file anymore here. It's not available. You can still dump the data out into a CSV file here, but to export out the time out of the system, it's always going to be done under later export. All right. So um, just make sure that you have the right data in here. The other thing that we offer with this, though, now is the ability to export the data out using multiple formats. So where this is handy is, let's say you have a format for exporting out your time um, for, for payroll, for, for Timberline payroll every week. It's the same, same thing that you do every week, right? But then maybe you have someone like ADP or um, Paychex or someone that's actually doing your um, payroll processing for you. And maybe they need something in a certain order or format. You can create multiple formats now in HH2 and then you can select them even for your own uh, reporting. When you're dumping out data, maybe you don't want it in the order that we have been exporting it out in for the last, I don't know, however long for each of you guys. So you can actually go in now into remote payroll into your integration formats and you can set your columns up um, a certain way and you could create a new format window in here called um, uh, 
uh, project, project manager report, and then or or whatever. And and then once once you have this in here, you could say create format. And now what I can do is I can drag my columns around in here any way that I want, and this becomes available to me now when I go into my labor export menu. I can come up to the settings and I can switch between all the different format views I have. So that's something new for you guys. And the reason why we point that out is some of you have requested that for multiple data folders that you manage. Some of your data folders have certain things in them like job and extra and some of the other companies may not have extra so you would want to leave that out or maybe you would want something in a different way like maybe one job um, you want to see the certified you want the certified box on and um, with your office uh, data folder or company that we're syncing with you you don't want uh, you know the job the extra and some of that stuff showing up so you can customize your format views to accommodate for your exports for your different data com data folders that you're importing into every week. All right, so I hope that covers the um, the, the export menu inside and out. Um, if you're having uh, trouble with any of that, then um, what I'm going to point out to you next is that we have done a thorough job on our videos now. Tina Anderson has done a wonderful job on creating those. I'm even recording the call for us today. So if you want to go back and look at this video, we're going to make this available on Dropbox for all of you. Um, we'll, we'll put it out on Dropbox and then we'll make it available on our, on our YouTube channel. Um, we have a YouTube channel out there. It's HH2 Web Services. I'll show you right here from the home page. You guys can go and access that. Um, if you just click on any of these instructional videos right here, um, you'll see that it links you right to our YouTube channel and our our handle on YouTube is HH2 Cloud Services. If you click on that, you can browse all of our videos now by product. So here's all of our remote payroll um, videos and they've been put together um, along with the videos for our apps, all of our apps and our other products out there. This is a much better way for getting your training out there now rather than trying to look at a, at a product manual and going through a hundred pages to try and find what you're looking for. So give these videos a view because I've recorded some of our past training sessions that I've done on the latest version of Remote Payroll. They're about 45 minutes long and you can just uh, scroll through and, and find what you're looking for. The other thing that I also want to hit home on is this right here. It's very important for you guys to understand now at the bottom of your um, of your uh, web page in HH2 is a telephone icon and by clicking on this icon it's going to um, contact our support team it's going to automatically fill out your information or whoever you're logged in as inside of HH2 and it's going to you know because we require the email and, and all of that stuff for an administrator it's going to automatically fill this out and allow you to add an attachment and describe any kind of an issue that you're having and submit that to our support team. It also links um, the, the contact administrator in your company if you set that up in your settings. Frequently asked questions that you can go out to and click on. Okay, Definitely take a look at these. And then a link to all of our latest instructional videos. Here's the one on the training for the upcoming release that we're talking about right now. So be sure to go out and look at those and, and point your people to them and uh, you won't run into any issues when, when you're uh, moved over to the latest version. The reason why I'm, I'm, I'm uh, spending or putting, spending time on this or putting an emphasis into it is that I'm not the guy that you want to contact with a lot of your questions um, because I'm constantly in meetings with training and implementation. My schedule right now is booked back to back. So if I don't respond to some of you, it's not that I haven't gotten your email, it's just that I don't get um, a, a lot of time during the day to, to get to, 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 to respond in the middle of the day to get you those answers that you need in a timely fashion. That's why we want you to send them through our support team so that those can go to the right people and then they can respond to you accordingly. Most of you know Tina, um, she's awesome. We've also pulled in two extra people now, all right? so. 
We're going to have um, a couple extra people brand new to her team as well that you'll be working with um, here shortly. And be sure to use this menu. And, and if you need um, to be contacted via phone, continue to do it the same way so that we can track your issues and respond to you in a timely fashion. Um, I'm just going to quickly, because I've got about 10 minutes, um, I'm just going to go through just a couple of the things that came up behind the scenes here with some of you. I'm just going to skim through a couple more of them. I know that I covered most of them. Um, but um, let's see, we have a crew of 20 plus employees in the field that do not have email addresses and they probably won't have any on, on any new employees. Will we need to create them an email? Yes, you will. I mean, we're in 2015, they need an email address. If they're not used to having an email, train them to go out to hotmail.com or Gmail and get one. It's a security issue now in the system. They need an email, they should have one. So we're not taking that requirement away. Um, for any of your existing users in the system, it's they're, they're still gonna be able to log in just fine. We'll honor that, but if you're creating new hires, they're gonna need to have an email. Um, do we need to map all the new employees going forward? Not for your existing employees, just for your new ones. All right, just for new employees, you'll want to make sure that they're that they're mapped. The only time that you don't ever that you don't have to map an employee to their user account in HH2 is if the user is not going to be entering, you're not going to be importing that user's time into Timberline. Um, just so you understand what that mapping does, if I have a user in HH2 called Chuck. All right, but his real name's his real name is Charles in Timberline. The only way that we can make that association with Chuck in HH2 when he imports his time into Timberline is to have him mapped to the correct ID in Timberline. So that's 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 really important. If if they're not going to be importing their own time and they're just logging into HH2 to code time for someone else, you know or just approve time for someone else, but they're not doing their own personal time, then you don't have to map them up. Uh, a good example of that would be like a subcontractor that's using your system to log in and just manage time for someone, and you're tracking that. If he's not entering in his time in the system, then it doesn't matter. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, on a salary employee, will HH2 pay an employee for OT if they enter more than 40 hours in one week? Um, I wish, I wish. Um, that's what, the, it, it doesn't do that. You're still going to have to um, manually specify that. There's no automatic uh, um, pay, pay ID rules. That's what I would like to call that as a pay ID rule. There's nothing that's going to automatically calculate overtime for any of your guys in the system. Um, eventually we may get there, but overtime is different for everybody out there, and, and, and it's a lot more complex, and I think some of you may think, because 40, for some people, overtime starts after 40 hours in a week, like it does for you, um, but for others, overtime may start after eight hours in a day, and a lot of, a lot of companies like to code like 10, 10, and 10, or 12, 12, and 12, or they just code in however many hours that they work during the day, and then once they get past 40, then they start coding in their overtime. So yes, you still have to manually split out the overtime on the pay ID uh, screen in on your time cards. There's nothing that's going to automatically calculate that yet. Yet we've talked about that though. Um, so with multiple payroll managers, um, you'll be able to. Uh, will I be able to export all employees regardless of who performed final appro approval for the download? Yes, um, there's a setting in that uh, in, in there for that, Chris. So we can talk with you more about that. Um, how do you remove someone's access from HH2 if they are no longer with the company? That's actually a good one. Let me just go into that really quickly. Um, for and this work would work um, for seasonal employees as well. So if you got like union employees too that are, that are constantly coming and going, um, the way that you would do this is under remote payroll payroll users. Um, all you need to do is come into a user account. So let's find someone in here. Let's find me. We'll come in here. I'm going to click on, on my name in here. And all I have to do is see where it says is active. I just uncheck that and I'm done. Okay. You do that and they can no longer log into HH2. And then it keeps them in this list. I can come in here and I can filter 
on all of these users in here. So I can filter on my inactive users if I want. I can filter on um, all users. Uh, you know, again, you know, it just makes it much much easier keeping them in HH2 than rather than trying to delete like an employee record out of the system. We'll, we'll never do that. But if I wanted to turn it back on, I would just come back and you can see I've used myself here quite a few times. You would come back in and you would mark it. That wasn't the right one. Let's see which one was it. It was this one right here. I just come back in and mark it as active. And then all of a sudden, they magically appear again in the system um, and they have a user account and they can log back in and they can start, start using that. That's for user account. That doesn't um, take out the, them as an employee out of your employee drop-down menu. To do that, what you would do is you would just go to their employee record. Um, so right here it says employee, set up employees to whom time is coded. In here, if you go to an employee record and you, you come in, you, you'll see right here is active. It's also showing their hire date, their rehire date. Um, right now, Right now, we're going to continue to automatically manage that based off of the the higher the higher date and termination date in Timberline. So as long as you guys are terming them, terming those employees inside of of Timberline, we'll automatically just take them out of the list for you, so that you don't have to worry about it. Um, just based on hire date, termination date, and rehire date. Okay, so that's how that works. So I hope that answers your question. Um, had another question come in. Uh, can an employee be deleted if they were entered in? Error, no, Chris. What, what, I mean, we could. We could manually scrub it out of the system for you, but what you would do is you would just inactivate them. So you would just go into this menu that I'm on right now under employees, so remote payroll employees, and then all you would do is you would come in and just mark them. Um, at the bottom, you'd uncheck uncheck the box. Now that that would only work if you manually entered them into um, into our system. Okay, if if you manually entered in employees, we don't have too many of you that do that. Okay, but if the employee was manually entered or created in our system rather than pulling it from Timberline, then yes, you would be able to go in and uncheck that box and deactivate them and that would work fine. If they came from Timberline, then you would go ahead and term them there. You would go ahead and terminate them, or, or you know, I would just term them so that it shows them terminated in our system, and then you could move them to an archived folder, and you know, then they would be gone out of HH2. You wouldn't see them. Um, yep, auto-syncing still works the same way, and um, it right now on this version of payroll, you guys, most of you sh are probably syncing once an hour. Okay, that's set up on your server. If you want to sync sooner than that, then you can go to your house button and you can go to the accounting sync right here, and then you can go up to the top and just sync right from the website. So, um, all of you should be on the latest version of the sync client. The latest version, how you'll know if you're on the latest version, is if um, you're 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 coming to this. To, to, I mean, most I know most of you that are not. So most of you in this meeting, none of you really have to worry about that. All of you have got the the correct version, and you should be seeing your data sync when you go in and you click on that. So that's from the house button. Click on the house button. Go to the accounting sync. You can you can do sync sooner than an hour if you ever need to. That's a manual process. We feel like 24 times a day is quite excessive. And they, you know, you shouldn't have to be doing any more syncing than that. But if someone called you up in the field and you quickly entered in a job in a Costco, they want to see it right then and there. Um, then you could, you could just hit sync, and it would pull it from Timberline right into HH2. Well, um, I appreciate everybody's time, and that was all of your questions. So that was really good. I know that some of you will have more questions that come up, and if I didn't get to something or I missed something, please let us know. Um, feel free to submit questions. I think after the webinar is done, you'll have an opportunity to, to rate me or uh, to fill out additional questions and send them to us. We'll respond to all of those. And then also, I just want to extend out to all of you and tell you that we appreciate your business. And if you do need further training and implementation, let us know. Um, we'll just get you on my calendar and we'll get you trained. 
um, and make sure that you guys are 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 ready to go. So um, that's all I have for today. This again, this training session will be available to all of you. Um, I think Dennis Doherty will either be emailing you directly with a link to the video um, or putting it out there somewhere for you to see. So we will have it available um, by tomorrow for all of you. And then if you need to give that to other users within your company, you can do so. Um, have a great week and take care. Thanks. Bye.